All right, shut up. Let's drink. Hey everyone, welcome back to Chef Tyler's Creation Kitchen, and today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm not wearing an apron. That's because we're not cooking today, but we are trying rakia. Rakia is a fruit brandy popular in the Balkan region, which is where Croatia is. And while you can get most of these that I have here from the store, everyone usually makes their own. This one here is made by my aunt Ivanka, and this one was made by Joey. And then that up there is the limoncello that I'm making. And over the summer, I made one from figs. The point is, people like to make the rakia partly because it's really easy. When I made the one over the summer with the figs, I took the same jar I have up there, filled it maybe this much of sugar, then the rest with figs, and poured loza over it, and let it sit in the sun for a few weeks. Super simple, and it tastes amazing, and you have that satisfaction that you made something. So here we have seven rakias, loza, pelin, limoncello, brescovica, jujula, borovnica, and teranino. We also have a special eighth one that I'll pull out later, and we'll see what that might be. It's one of my favorite ones, and I'll leave it at that. So, without further ado, let's get started. So we're gonna start with Loza. Loza is distilled from grapes. It's gonna be similar to Italian grappa. It's very strong. It's basically just pure alcohol, uh, 40%, so not as bad as Everclear, but it's still, not the best for drinking. The main use of loza is to make other arakias. So when I made my fig arakia over the summer, I poured in loza. The limoncello I have on going over there, that's being done in loza. If you're making arakia, you're probably using loza. For whatever reason you can't find loza, you can sub for vodka. If you're in Croatia, that's not a problem. Everyone sells loza or everyone, or everyone knows someone who makes their own loza, and then you can make your arakia from that. Just saying, if you are in the U.S. and you want to make your own narakia, it's as simple as just subbing in vodka and throwing your fruit and sugar and letting it sit. Anyway, without further ado, let's take a shot of this. I've already taken a shot of this one on the Govija Yupa episode, as it was my first time here in this apartment. It was a housewarming gift in a way. Um, I know what it's going to be like, and I'm doing this for you because I don't normally drink a lot of this. Uh, I'm not going the whole way because I know what this is and I know what it will be like. I've done the whole way before. Go check the Gova Jiva episode out. And plus I have seven more Arakias to go after this. So I hate this one. <laughs> There's a reason you don't really drink this. So Jivia. <laughs> it just burns. It has it has no flavor. It's the reason <laughs> you make other stuff. I forgot to introduce the water. I have water here because water is important. Um yeah, this is just pure alcohol. I don't know what to say about it other than it has no flavor and it's a base for everything else. I do know one time I went to maybe it was my uncle's house, probably an uncle or another cousin or someone somehow related to me. I was in the village, everyone's related to everyone. And I was there at like 10.30 a.m. and he's just there taking shots of rakia, Loza probably was. And he was like, do you want one? I was like, absolutely not which is also a big taboo. Like when you're at a Croatian house and someone offers you something, it's customary to say yes. Like Croatians are very proud of their hospitality and being a good host. So if you're gonna offer something, it's generally the right, the right thing to do is to accept it. Meanwhile, it's 10.30 a.m. I do not want a shot of Loza. And I was like, no, I, it's okay. Like, thank you, I'll drink something else. And he insisted and I took a shot of Rakia at 10.30 in the morning and I guess that was probably one of the most Croatian things I've ever done, but God, it felt awful. And then he started laughing at me for coughing on it because I don't understand how you can't cough on it, but he was going and just like drinking it straight. Like, I don't even think he was like taking shots. He was just sipping it. I don't know 
how you get to that point, why you want to get to that point. I'm just rambling. I don't like Lowe's up. Let's move on to something better. I know I said that we'll move on to something better, but we're actually moving on to Palin, which is another thing I don't love, but I do actually like it more. So Palin, which is short for Palinkovats, is a type of distilled herbal liqueur. It reminds me a lot of Jägermeister, though I'm not entirely sure how the two flavor profiles compare. I drank Jägermeister exclusively when I was in college, and now that I'm here, I will have Palin, but I'll never have Jägermeister. So I've never had the two side by side, but it does remind me of it, maybe just the herbality from it, and probably the color. But in my opinion, it's the Croatian Jägermeister. So there's two types of Palin. This one is called Antique. It's going to be a little bit sweeter. And then there's the original, which is differentiated from Antique by being called Gorki, which means bitter, because it's more bitter. This is still bitter. It's a bit better than the other one, but it's still a little bit bitter and not my favorite thing in the world, because I just don't like bitter things. However, I did have another bottle of this. This is new. I bought it the other day. And that's because I finished the other one. I would have a little bit of it after dinner. And as much as I didn't like the taste, it did make me feel better. It's a digestive. That's, that's the point. And it says it right on here, too. Um, Želudačno okrepljuče sredstvo. It means it helps with digestion, basically. Želudačno is like the adjective word for stomach. So... So traditionally here in Croatia, you can get pelin either neat on the rocks or with some kind of mixer. I think the most common is strukani, which has a bit of la lemon juice, I believe it is. We can also get peite or a pelin in tonic, which is, as it says, it's pelin and it has some tonic in it. Maybe even a splash of lemon juice as well. You can get pelin with an orange. Pelin's not on chum. That's my dad's favorite way of having it or Pe'ites Naranchom, which is Pelin tonic with orange. I'm not going to be that fancy. I also hate tonic water. Um, I love gin. I hate tonic water. I know it's weird, but I'll just take my gin with sparkling water. I think it tastes so much better that way. That's either here or there. We're not talking about gin. We're talking about Pelin. And I actually have to open this bottle first because it is new. One of the things I love about Croatian bottles is, in general, they have this little tab here. Makes it so much easier when you want to open the bottle. Well, okay, not this one. This one is calling me a huge liar. It's not, there we go. Okay. It does make it a lot easier when opening the bottle. And they'll have these on wine bottles as well. And I think that's just amazing because it removes the need to have the knife to try to take the, uh, the foil off the wine wrapper. And it just, like I said, makes getting this off so much easier. So let's go ahead and pour a bit of Palin. Um, if you're out, you'll probably actually get this much Croatian. It can be very stingy when you're getting hard liquor out. Um, I do want some ice in this though, so it's not straight and it's a little cold. So I'm going to grab some ice and pop some in. Well, there goes some of the Palin. Um, I wanted to swirl it around and instead I just got it all over me. Uh, and this is only the second shot. God damn. All right, so now that this has cooled down a little bit and I've cleaned off my sleeve, let's give it our taste. Jivia. Still bitter, but actually not as bad. I think, like I said, I've been coming around to it. I don't hate it as much as I used to. It is still very bitter, but it does have that sweetness to it, and it's a little syrupy. Bitter and herbal, that's the best way to describe it. And it actually is really nice after, especially a big meal, really helps you digest better. Maybe it's like kimchi, but from Croatia, because the Croatians like to drink, and I don't really know what the significance of kimchi to Korean culture is. I know it's important, I know they have it a lot, but... I don't know if I can even show this. Okay, Palin, I don't want this to go to waste. So let's just... I don't want to take the whole thing. I think part of the reason shot sucks so much is because you have to do the whole thing all at once. Except for things like vodka or loaf, I couldn't do that. 
slower. This I think you need to be a little, a little slower, a little more careful, more, um, what's the word? Per not permanent, um, purposeful, more purposeful. Now, now there's another word. I swear I am forgetting my English now that I lived here in Croatia. It's not so bad, but sometimes I catch myself not using articles when I should, saying things that aren't really correct, but they can kind of work. And I always try to correct. So when people are around, we're talking in English and it's broken. I always try to like correct it in my head. I don't want to be, I'm not rude and like saying, no, 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 that's not how you say it. Um, in my head, I correct them as an effort to try to not forget the right way of saying things. But sometimes I guess it's, it fails or it doesn't work or I hear things that people say and it's like that's not wrong but now I can't think of the right way of saying it my biggest example or my favorite mo <laughs> my favorite example is until when do you have class which I don't know I cannot remember if that's like correct or not if there's like a better way of saying it because to me it sounds wrong and like more of a direct translation from Croatian but I can't think of what it should be in English for the life of me if you know you can write down to the the comments and help help me out but all right shut up let's drink yeah this is gonna take a while well that's palin now we're gonna move on to something a little sweeter all right now we're moving on to something a little bit sweeter we have limoncello yes limoncello this is a croatian limoncello i know that limoncello is generally associated with italy and thought to be something that is Italian. However, Croatia has its own. There's this one from the island of Vis. There's mine up there that is steeping. My aunt makes one. Limoncello exists outside of Italy. And, you know, I hate how Italians think that Italian cuisine is like the final word when it comes to just cuisine in general. Like, this is it. And I also hate, probably even more, is that everything in Italian cuisine is so codified that you can't change anything without having like brigades of them out on the internet being like this is in the carbonara because you use pancetta like bully me cura so if i want to use pancetta i will use pancetta and call it a carbonara there's nothing you can do about it it grinds my gears because i i just don't get it like honest to god every day i wake up and thank god that i'm not italian i don't know what i would do if i was i would I actually probably be brainwashed into thinking that Italian cuisine is the best in the world and there is nothing else after it. But fortunately, I am not Italian. I am not brainwashed. We're having limoncello from Vis. Uh, Vis is a, an island in the south part of Croatia, about two hours from Split. It is the furthest island, first inhabited island from the coast of Croatia. There are some further islands out there, but they're not inhabited. Vis is beautiful. They actually shot Mamma Mia there because it was cheaper than going to Greece and you probably couldn't tell the difference or maybe you could tell the difference because it was prettier. Anyway, we went there this past summer. It's amazing. We stopped in at Wieslander. This is where this uh, limoncello comes from. Wieslander is a winery and they have amazing wines, but they also make some rakias like everyone does, including this limoncello. They also make gin. They make an amazing lemon infused gin. It was when I had it the first time, I was so surprised at how good it was. It wasn't harsh at all. It was just very smooth with a good amount of lemon flavor. Not overpowering, but not like a whisper of it. Like it was a strong, it's ear flavor. But this, this video isn't about gin. We're talking about the limoncello. So let's just grab our, go. I think the yellow glass is perfect for this one. I had even planned that. We're going with the yellow glass here for our limoncello let's go and pour uh i don't mind shooting more of this it's still not all the way but that's fine that's first thing right off the bat like it smells of lemon which of course it does but it's a nice pure lemon flavor there's no hint of alcohol on the smell much different than the lotus so much better Jivia. So while there wasn't any amount of alcohol in the smell, you definitely do taste it. I think this one is a little too strong for my liking. I would like it a little bit sweeter. Generally, when it comes to wines, I want them drier, but my liquors, I would like sweeter. I don't want to taste the alcohol, you know? But either way, it's still really good. 
It, it's really crisp and clean lemon flavor. Sure, it has a kick to it, but it's actually not as bad. Pretty much recovered from that after the Loza. There was there was a break between doing the Loza and going on to the Pale Ale. I will say that much. But uh, the Limoncello, it's it tastes like lemons, and it's not it's not too sweet. I'll say that if you don't like your Limoncello really really sweet, this would be a perfect Limoncello for you. However, I do think it's a little bit uh, alcohol forward. You definitely do taste it, especially there at the end. So if that's something you're not too keen on, maybe try a different limoncello. Maybe try mine. Limoncello I have up there. I did want to do a tasting of it on this episode. However, it's not done. It takes about two weeks and I had to, I basically did it like the last day I could before I leave for America because I don't want to leave it sitting there the entire time I'm gone. Um, so yeah, actually by the time you're seeing this, I'll already be in America. But Yeah. <laughs> My friend Anelia does this all the time when she just, I feel like she just gives up on trying to explain something. So she's like, and I've caught myself doing the same thing. Um, that is limoncello. It was good. I actually feel good about this one after that. I don't know if it's the two shots I had before this. The pallion is over there in the fridge chilling a bit. So I couldn't drink all of it. And I think it would have ruined my appetite. If I had it before, like too much before. It's definitely not an after shippy, the, the pallion. I always just sit here. I don't know what to do next because I feel like there's more to say. There's more to do, but do the magic of editing this thing on the Okay. What's up next? Brescovita? Brescovita. All right. So that was the limoncello. So this here is Joey's Brescovita. Now, Brescovita is made from peaches. The word for peach in Croatian is Brescova. So Brescovita, Raki from Brescova or peaches. Joey told everyone that he wanted to make it from peaches. And everyone else, like every Croatian that he knew, told him not to do that because peaches are too watery. It's not going to turn into a good rakia. However, ever the American, he said, I don't care and I'm going to do it anyway. And it actually turned out pretty good. I did try it before with him, of course. And now that unfortunately he has left the country, he entrusted me with the rest of his rakia. And now I will share it all with you. So here we have a pink glass. I'm doing great on this glasses. What did I do the first one? So the first one was gray. I think gray is a great color for the Loza. Then it was yellow for Limoncello. Now we have pink for the peaches. Even though this isn't pink, it's fine. I would be kind of concerned if this was pink, I'll be honest. Maybe, maybe peaches aren't that pink, but they're more orange. Ah, well. It still looks good in the glass, though. Like, can you, can you see this? If anything good has come from this, it's my ability to match the color of the liquid to the shot glass. Hopefully, the rest of them match up as well, as I am running out of colors to choose from. Anyway, Jivia. I didn't want to shoot it. I felt that would be wrong. But it's hot. It does taste like peaches. Like, it, it is peachy. <clears throat> There's something else in there, too. There's another flavor, almost pineapple-y, but I know it's not with pineapple juice. Um, so Joey and I actually tried this before um, together with pineapple juice, so we can cut to that now. If I try it with a little bit of juice, it's or in a very cocktail, strong too. Well, yeah, you can thin it out with something, or maybe I've tried it with a little pellet. Okay. Because what I really liked with the, the Vishnia and Arachalas that you made, so the cherry and walnut, is that it did, you didn't really taste the alcohol. This one you really did. Yeah, it doesn't mask it quite as much. And I didn't add as much sugar because the peaches are so sweet. Right. But uh, yeah, that's a little bit more sugar here. So, so with uh, pineapple juice? Jiva. Pineapple peach. I think this is definitely better. I think this is definitely, this is definitely better this way. Oh, it is a great mixer. <laughs> I don't have pineapple juice now, so I can't try it again. But those are my opinions that I'm no longer remembering. However, Joey's Brescovica, it's very good. I don't think it fits the season. It's, what is it? It's December 8th. It's dark already. It's, oh, it's five. Okay, it's supposed to be dark at this time. Either way, Brescovica, good, not for the winter. But if you want to make it, go ahead and make it. Now let's move on to another homemade one, Gijula. Here we have Tete Ivanka's Gijula. This comes from juju berries. I did not know those existed in Croatia or even that my Tete Vanka had juju berries until she gave this to me. 
And this one actually has still some jujubes there in at the bottom. I had this once, but I don't remember exactly what it tasted like. I don't really have anything else to say about it. So we're going with the green glass this time. I think jujuberries are green, or maybe they're green before they're ripe, and then they turn red. Look, I don't even know what a jujuberry is. I just thought it was something made up, <laughs> to be honest. But however, I do have Arakia from it. I don't know much to say about this one. I know nothing about jujuberries or jujubees. Jujubees are called? I thought jujubee was a drag queen. Maybe she is. Whatever. Um, here we go. Ooh, that's a lot. Okay. <laughs> Definitely the most I've poured for myself. Visually, it looks closest to the palin. So visually, it looks the closest to the palin. I mean, ooh, I wonder if this is what jujubeberries smell like. It's not like, it smells almost earthy. Like, not right when you first smell it. Hmm. But there's a, like, earth tone at the end. Earth tone. Isn't that just for color? Um, <laughs> you are finding out so much about what I don't know. Um, but it smells nice. I don't know. Like, I was saying this the other day. I never know what to say about the food. I think adjectives are my least favorite part of speech. I find them to be generally superfluous in a way that I'm now realizing is ironic when I'm using superfluous to describe what I don't like about them. Superfluous, I know, is an adjective because it ends in O-U-S. A lot of adjectives in English tend to end in O-U-S or I-C, or so that I learned when I did read a book called Word Power Made Easy that my dad forced upon me in high school. As he told me, it's what helped him learn English, because his first language, not English, is actually Croatian. But my Croatian is better, better than his now, which is the greatest thing in the world, if you ask me. He said it helped him learn English uh, because it's very logical in the way that it goes about teaching you wor new words. Basically, it breaks everything down and says, these are like the root words. This is what they mean in their original language, be it Greek, be it Latin, even French. And then this is how it got adapted into English. Now you can see all these different words that come from that word and how they relate to that. That's actually also where I learned the word adroit. I love that word. I don't use it often enough, but it's a good word. Uh, <clears throat> neither here nor there. Adjectives are my least favorite part of speech. I think they are, like I said, I think they're just a bit superfluous. They can be generally unnecessary, but maybe that just goes with the way I kind of am a very, I am very kind of like, this is the way things are, but also not kind of flirty, like, you know, or no los dos, I think, is my life motto. And adjectives aren't the most important. I hate reading... Right, let's get real for a second. I hate reading old poetry because it just like goes endlessly on. It's super flowy and flowery language talking about a fucking smokestack. Or, I don't know. I didn't pay that much attention in high school English. There were There's a select few books that I actually read in high school English. And I want my favorite, my favorite one is The Sun Also Rises. And I think it's because, or partly because, I love Hemingway's writing style. It's very much, this is what happened. No adjectives, no adjectives, very few adjectives. Just very prescriptive. This is what happened. This is what's going on. It leaves, it definitely is a lot to your imagination and helps like you try to fill in the blanks in what's going on. But even if you weren't doing that, because I was totally not doing that the first time I read it, it's, I found very good and very easy to read. There's a message there that you don't even have to dig for. Like what he says, there's something in there, but then you can go in further, dig deeper, like my English teachers always told me to do, and I refused because I hated English when I was a kid. There's another, excuse me, there's another story down there. There's something more. He's talking a lot about his experiences in the war and how that turned him into the person he is when he wrote that. Okay, sorry. This is not my review of The Sun Also Rises. This is my review of Zizula. So let's give it a taste. Uh, Teta Ivanka, thank you very much for this. And I hope Mia does not translate what I say next if it's bad. <laughs> Teta Ivanka, thank you for this. Jivia. Ooh, no, no, I don't like that. Ooh, 
it's not that it's strong. It's definitely not strong. It's from a sweet versus strong liquor flavor perspective, this is really good. I do like the balance that she got going on here. I don't think I like jujubes because of it. That's what I'm getting from this. I don't like jujubes. Another thing I know I don't like is carob. Um, the Tetevanka's sister, Teta Rujica, makes a uh, rakia from ca uh, carob. It's called rogach. Or is it rogacha? So neither here nor there. Either way, I don't like carob. It Carob lies to you. Carob smells very chocolatey. And I love chocolate, so I thought I would like the carob. But I do not like carob. And I don't like jujubes, it seems, either. I'm sorry, Teta Ivanka, it's not you. It's the jujubes. But I'm not finishing this. It's not even going to go. <laughs> so I'm not finishing this. Now I feel bad. Teta Ivanka's either watching this. I think Teta Rujica watches this. And she's going to tell Teta Ivanka. Or Mia's watching this. Hello, family, who's watching this. Hi, Nana. I hope you're not too disappointed in me. <laughs> All right. I am going to finish this because Teta Ivanka. Teta Ivanka. I need to talk to you for a second. I want to thank you for everything you have given me this year, including the Zizula. I'm sorry that it's not my favorite, but the limoncello that I have going on up there, that is being made from your lemons. So thank you so much for the lemons. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you get to try the limoncello. I'll find me, and I'll give it to her, and she'll bring it to you. So because I'm grateful, I'm going to finish this shot. It's still not any better. <laughs> Uh, thank God I have this water. It's just, I don't like jujubes. That is that is my takeaway from this. I don't like jujubes. Okay. That's enough of that. Let's move on to something that I know I like because I've had it a bunch. But I'll need to... This one is made from blueberries and is also the first sarakia that I remember ordering or actually that I ordered myself, there's probably a time that I ordered Rakia, or someone gave me a Rakia before Helen, but this is the first that I can remember. This was six years ago now, 2017, that summer. Yep, 2017, that summer. I was in the village. I was staying with my grandparents, uh, mainly for the summer. I was also at Croatian language school, and that is actually the reason I moved, part of the reason I moved to Croatia, and I'm here today. This is not that, this is not the time for that story. The Borovnica, however, so my cousin and I were, were drinking that night and we were at the at the harbor, well, the little harbor, like, or not the main harbor, the village, but the harbor where our family's from. Anyway, we were, we were drinking and we just went onto someone's boat because why not? And at one point we decided we didn't want to keep drinking beer. We'll go for something harder. So we walked to a, the cafe bar that was maybe 20 meters away. You Americans, <laughs> you silly Americans. Who could be so silly as to be American? Um, <laughs> uh, 20 meters is like 65 feet, something like that. Um, so we walked over there. We got shots of Borovnica. And I didn't know what it was at the time because my cousin ordered it. And that's because my creation was extant but not great at the time but anyway he orders Borovnica and I thought it was really good so we got a few more shots and then we went back to the boat and eventually got kicked off of it because not the owner came by but some other person who cared way too much about what we were doing and told us to get off the boat and we know it wasn't the owner because the moment we got off the boat they just left and if you were the owner of that boat and you found two random kids drinking on your boat don't you think maybe you would like look around and make sure they didn't fuck anything up anyway this is about Borovnica so let us grab a glass. Ah, oh, the blue one. Okay, <laughs> I have been, what are we up to? Five now, five for five, I think, on these glasses. Maybe four and a half. Uh, the, the peach one, the pink and the peach was a bit off, but it's okay. We have Borovnica now. We'll take a shot. I know I'm going to take this whole thing because I love it so much. 
it does taste like blueberries. Taste, it smells like blueberries. <laughs> All right, Jivio. Ah, uh, it's so good. It's not. <clears throat> it tastes like blueberry juice almost. Not almost. It tastes like blueberry juice. Like you don't taste alcohol in this whatsoever. It is also 24%, so that is a good amount. But it's so sweet, but it's not syrupy. Like the, the paling was a little syrupy. This isn't syrupy. It's the perfect middle ground between the syrupiness of the paling and the wateriness of Joey's Bresk pizza. That being said, the, the paling isn't like syrupy. It is definitely a liquid. It's just syrupier than this. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense to me. Borovnica, though, I have fond memories of the Borovnica. Another thing, the I love I love making cocktails. One of the things I did over COVID was get really, really into cocktail making, partially because my senior year I started following this guy on YouTube, Educated Barfly, amazing channel. Hello. <laughs> They're never gonna see this. Um anyway, I was living in my frat house and at the time, well still is, my frat house was dry, so we couldn't drink in it, which also meant we couldn't have parties, which sounds awful, but I promise you it wasn't. It was amazing because you could go somewhere else, party, and then come home, and you know it's quiet and, most importantly, clean. Anyway, I was watching this throughout my senior year in this channel, and I was getting, like really interested in cocktails and trying some stuff, but I knew I couldn't do anything in the house because it was dry. I couldn't have alcohol. So once COVID happened, it kind of... In some ways, COVID was a blessing. In other ways, it was a curse. But in this case, it was a blessing because it happened only, like two months before I graduated from college. So I had, I guess, the time where I could start making cocktails pushed up two months. So I was pretty happy about that. So I had this Borovnica and I actually reached out to the guys who run the Educated Barfly and shockingly they responded to me. I was asking what I could do with the Borovnica. And they said, you could make a cocktail with gin and lemon juice and some simple syrup. And I like mix it up. They gave me some idea like portions, but I tweaked it just a little bit to make my first own cocktail. And I sent it to my now ex who was like, wow, that looks like the sunset. And because of that, I named it the Blueberry Sunset. After we broke up, I thought about changing the name because I didn't like having the association of the name with my ex, but I just couldn't think of a better name. And it still is. And at this point, I just don't give a shit. That's a long-winded way of saying, I like Borovnica. If you can get your hands on this, do get your hands on this. It is so good. Okay, we have two more. I forgot about the secret one. All right, get your hands on some Borovnica. Up next, we have, I don't what do we have next? Teranino. Oh, I love Teranino. Teranino is so good. Teranino, up next. Teranino is made from wine, made from Teran, a type of grape native to the Istria region in Croatia. That's that little triangle-shaped peninsula in the northwest part of the country. I don't know why I always get my east and west confused. It is similar to Rakia because it is sweetened, it is spiced too, um, and it is also fortified. I think of it as the Croatian port. Although it's not really a fortified wine in the way that port is, it's more of a sweetened fortified wine that I, I don't think there's a really specific word for it. I think it's just Teranino is Teranino. I was actually giving my friend, my classmate, friend and classmate, Miriana some shit today for trying to define a word with the word. Uh, the word was precision and she said that which is precise, which does not help you because if you want to know the definition of the word, you can't define it with the word because you don't know. So Teranino, so Teranino is a kind of rakia from wine. It's very, very, very common up in the Istria region. And it's also a great, I think, not necessarily digestive. I think if you're looking for some actual help with digestion, go with the pellet. That is the way to go. But it's a great after dinner drink. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet. Um, and I like it. I like it a lot. 
So I'm going to use a normal glass for it. I don't think it makes sense to stick it out of a shot glass. I don't know if that's really giving it the respect that I don't know if you would say it deserves, but I feel that I should give it because it is one of my favorite things to drink. And I've actually cooked with it too. Oh, it smells so good. Um, I've used like Julia Child's recipes. And anytime she called for port, I've used Terranino. And like I said, it's not port. It's not a true fortified wine, but it's like a fortified wine. And I found that subbing in port or subbing in Terranino for port actually yields really good results. So do with that as you will. I'm going to try this Terranino. It's wine. It's sweetened wine. Like, I don't. It's, it is sweet in the wine. It smells so inviting and so nice. Here we go, lack of adjectives again, but I don't care. I love this stuff. As you can see by drinking all of it. It's sweet, but it's not too too sweet. Like I was saying before, I like my liquors sweeter, but I like my wine drier. This is not necessarily towing the line of being too sweet, but it's definitely getting to the point where I think it might be too sweet as far as wines go. But it has that bit of fortification, and I think this is what? 16.5%. So definitely more than a normal bottle of wine, but it, it's the perfect little sweet but strong note to end a meal on. And that's Terranino. I love Terranino. If you can find Terranino wherever you are, drink it. It's so good. And that's it for our regularly scheduled programming. But like I said, we have a surprise eighth rakia. Surprise! It's a bowl! No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. It is, of course, a bowl. But inside of it is what we care about. So Thanksgiving was like two, two weeks ago. And for that, I made an apple pie. I had a bunch of leftover apples. I, mean, I cut up way too many apples. But I was thinking to myself, what could I do with all the leftover apples? So what I did is I took them and I put them into this bowl. Obviously, this is where this is going. And I took the loza that I tried before and filled it up to the top, added some sugar, some cinnamon, and let it steep for about two weeks actually exactly two weeks, and now we're going to try it. So this is a general way of how you make rakia. You take a fruit, you add sugar, and if you want spices, you add some spices into it, and let it sit. So let's, uh, yeah, let's give it a taste. First we have to obviously get it out of this bowl, so I'm going to grab another bowl. We're going to take a strainer and some cheesecloth, just to make sure if there's any like smaller particles in there, nothing gets into our finished product. And from that, we will take our taste. Let's get started. Now we are ready. We have our bowl, our strainer, and of course, some cheesecloth. Thank you, Sweet Tom, for the cheesecloth. So I'll put the strainer on the bowl, and I'll put the cheesecloth here in like so. And I'm just going to pour right in. There is a lot of gunk, probably cinnamon there at the bottom. This is the main reason I wanted the cheesecloth. I didn't think any of the apple would go through, but I wanted the make sure that none of the cinnamon went in and make it grainy. So I'm just going to take this and squeeze a bit. Try to get as much juice out of it as possible, though I think, yeah, that's, that's good. We're getting something out. Oh, that color looks so good. But before I show you, you want to taste one of these. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that is... That is alcohol-infused apples if I've ever... That is alcohol-infused apples if I've ever tasted one. Oh, God. Zero out of ten. Do not recommend. I cannot get over this color. It literally looks like liquid gold. It's... So nice. Mm. And the flavor of like the apples in there. 
Okay. The last glass. And it is orange. It is so close. It's like 6 out of 10 on these glasses. This is what I'm proud of. I don't give a shit about anything else that I matched these glasses unintentionally to everything. Amazing. Well, since I don't have any good way of pouring this out, I'm just going to dunk it in. That's a good amount. Okay. Sure, it's a little crude, but who are you going to tell? Jivia. Okay. I think it could use a little more cinnamon. Definitely could use a little more cinnamon. But, like, the sweetness level and, like, the alcohol level are definitely fine. Oh, that might be the apple I'm tasting instead. Ooh, okay. That actually, that's pretty good. I'm not upset with that at all. I like this. Apple cinnamon is one of my favorite adakias. The bar that I go to do trivia at every week has a really good bottle of it. And whenever we win, we get a free shot. And I always get a free shot of that. I will say this is definitely more alcohol-y. And I definitely did not do a great job at the steeping. I just kind of threw it all together. But for what I did, I really like how it turned out. I'm very impressed with myself. I am amazing. That, I'm amazing. That is what you should get out of this. <laughs> and here we have all of our Takiyas plus the special secret eighth one. I really hope you enjoyed this. Happy New Year. Želim svima sredna i uspješna nova godina.